What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I'm gonna talk about 10 things that every single programmer, every single software engineer in the world universally hates. In fact, I challenge you if you're a software engineer, which I presume you are, to find one thing out of the 10 things I'm gonna name that you do not hate. Hint, you're not gonna be able to. So, I put the two worst ones at the very beginning and at the very end, and with that, let's start with one of these two worst ones. The thing that every single programmer absolutely hates is when you encounter a bug that is not reproducible, or even worse, a bug that is sometimes reproducible. And this can happen when you're developing your website or your app, but even worse, it can happen when a customer contacts you and says, hey, I have this bug, you know, can you help me with it? And you go to reproduce it, you reproduce it maybe once or twice, or maybe one of your coworkers reproduces it, but you are not able to do so consistently. It is so annoying. You feel like you lose all power. You have no idea what's going on. I hate it, and I'm sure you do too. Now, the second thing that every single programmer hates is when you have a piece of code that you know should work, but it doesn't. Let's say you're writing code, you're debugging something, and you're like, okay, well, let me confirm that this line of code here works. We should hit this print statement because the variable above is true, right? Of course it is. Wait, it's not. How's this possible? Or sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll print a variable on one line, you'll reprint it on the line underneath, and you're like, there's no way this variable changes between these two lines, right? And yet, it does. You suddenly feel like everything that you knew about programming is no longer, and it's just the worst. And the third thing that every programmer hates is actually similar to the previous one, just the opposite, and it's probably a little bit worse. It's when you know that something shouldn't work, and yet it does. So let's say, you know, you have your thing where you're like, okay, this should work, but it doesn't. And you're like, okay, I don't understand why. Well, let me confirm that this doesn't work. Like, there's no way we hit this line of code, and yet we do. Just like, no. Number four, this is something that I have mentioned in the past, but I'm gonna mention it again. There is absolutely no way that you enjoy this. It is setting up a new dev environment. This happens when you join a new company or you join a new team and you have to set up the entire code base, the entire you know, server, the stack, and for whatever reason, it is always the most painful, least fun thing in the history of the world. Everything is broken, things don't work, there's never documentation. If there is documentation, it's outdated. Or if it's not outdated, everything is smooth until one part that is just unclear enough to have you be stuck and you find yourself there in the middle of the of the room or you know remotely you know talking to your coworkers like hey does anybody know how to fix this issue when setting up the server and of course no one knows it's like a game of ping pong where every one of your coworkers is like uh, I don't really know, but I think Kevin last did this. And then Kevin's like, oh, well, I don't really know, but I think Maria was the last person who figured this out. Can you go ask her? It's like the worst. No, no, no. The fifth thing that every single programmer in the world absolutely hates is gonna be coding interviews, specifically algorithm style interviews. Now I should mention, not everybody actually hates algorithm style problems. I happen to really find them fun and enjoyable. However, I think that most people don't like them from what I've heard and seen around me. And also basically everybody doesn't like the interview aspect of them, myself included. That being said, if you wanna hate algorithm style interviews a little bit less, consider being well-prepared, and you can be well-prepared by using my company, AlgoExpert. Just go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. The sixth thing that every single programmer hates, this one actually ties back to the fourth, and it is poor documentation. Every programmer hates when they have to refer to documentation, because sometimes you have to do that, but the documentation is garbage, meaning garbage, trash, filth. For example, if you're someone like me who works in front-end development, you're probably used to going on the Mozilla MDN docs, and those are fantastic, they're really nice, they're a pleasure to read through, but then sometimes, occasionally, you might find yourself visiting the I don't know, C++ documentation. I don't know what psychopath wrote the C++ documentation. Forgive me if I'm offending anybody, but you get what I mean. 
Poor documentation, really annoying. Sometimes it's not even the documentation that's poor, it's more the presentation. It looks like it was built maybe in the 1990s or 1980s, back when coding was hardly a thing. But either way, you get what I mean. I will say this is a little bit hypocritical because most software engineers don't like writing documentation, so perhaps they shouldn't be so judgmental when they're faced with poor documentation. But yeah, it is what it is. Number seven dealing with tricky variable names. Now, what I mean by tricky variable names is variables that are impossible to name. If you've never encountered this, believe me, you will encounter it soon enough, but I'm sure that most of you have. You encounter some variable that is so weird, so bizarre, so nuanced, so context-specific that it is impossible to find a name for. For example, recently on Algo Expert, my co-founder Antoine was working on something for our infrastructure, and he had a function that was doing something a little bit weird where it traversed like up a file system and was looking for some sort of file, and he asked us for advice on how to name it. And his original name was find cousin in tree. And we were like, cousin? Why cousin? It's not really a cousin that you're looking for. It's more of an uncle. So find uncle file. But that seemed really weird. We were like, why are we naming this function uncle? Like, can we not use human names in this? And so we ended up going with find file in lineage. But even that is still a little bit weird. You get the idea. It's a nightmare. Variable naming is hard. Let's move on to point number eight. The eighth thing that every single programmer hates, I suppose this one is specific to front-end engineers, but we'll go with it anyway, browser incompatibility issues. If you are a front-end engineer, you have almost certainly faced an issue related to browser incompatibilities. What I mean by that is your website or your app works on every single browser except one random browser, or even more specifically, one random version of a browser where the entire website just decides to puke on itself, to vomit some really nice slime on itself. And you have no idea why. For example, for us on Algo Expert, we have actually encountered this, where sometimes everything's working smoothly, Chrome is always a delight, but for whatever reason, maybe, I don't know, some older version of Safari, like four versions ago, decides to break. And you know, one page of our website suddenly looks completely broken, completely different than it should, or some piece of functionality just doesn't work. You can't find anything on Stack Overflow, and it's just really, 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 really annoying. Number nine, the ninth thing that every single programmer absolutely despises, this one is a very simple, it rolls off the tongue, PHP. I don't think I need to say anything more. And for those of you who work at Facebook, or shall I say, Meta, hack. Nobody likes hack. Facebook. Let's be real. And last but not least, the tenth thing that every single programmer absolutely despises, like I said at the very beginning of the video, this is one of the worst ones, it is when you send a pull request. So you send your code up for review, and you need one person to approve that pull request so that you can then merge it into the code base, and the person reviewing your pull request leaves one comment a nice comment, a trivial comment, like, hey, could you rename this variable? Or, hey, could you add a comment above this line of code? And it's a fine comment. You'll agree with the comment. You're going to address the comment. However, the person decides to be a little bit of a dickhead by not giving you the approval that you need to merge the pull request. And so you're left having to deal with a trivial comment and then go back to them to re-get their review and re-get their approval. And you're just like, why? Why couldn't you trust me to merge the pull request? Now, I will concede here that there are exceptions to this. For example, if you're brand new to a company, I think this is normal, you know, a software engineer at the company shouldn't give you a ton of trust if you're brand new to the company. Also, there are some teams or companies where any change to a pull request will just automatically require a new approval just for defensive measures. But if those things are not in place, so if there is this sort of implicit trust within your team, and that person doesn't give you the approval, it's just like, ah. And even if it's just, even if it's okay, even if it's for safety, let's be real, we still all hate that. Anyway, those are my 10 things that every single programmer hates. I hope that you enjoyed them. Let me know what you thought about them in the comments below. Did I miss one? I'm sure I did. I'm very curious. I'll pin maybe the, the most fun one, the one that everybody's like, oh my god, yes, that one he forgot, and that one is something that we all hate. And otherwise, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content, Instagram if you like pictures, and I will see you in the next video.